Masip na yung araw grade 9 students. Welcome to Bamboo Teleskwela. This is your school on air in Mathematics 9. I am Teacher Joyce from Kawayan City National High School, Maine. Your teacher for today. In this lesson, we will be learning about ratio and proportion. This learning session expects you to be able to define and illustrate ratio and proportion and to solve for the unknown in a proportion. Every day, we're dealing with ratio and proportion in comparing prices per liter or gallon while grocery shopping, in calculating proper amounts for ingredients in recipes, and in determining how long a carton might take. Therefore, ratio and proportion is very important in our lives. Before we apply ratio and proportion, let us first define the meaning of ratio and proportion. Did you know that the word ratio comes from the Greek word logos? When translated in Latin, it means reason, as in the word rational. Ratios can be used to compare two or more numbers. It says how much of one thing there is compared to another thing. For example, there are eight girls and five boys in a class. The ratio of girls to boys is eight to five. Given the two numbers, x and y, wherein y is not equal to zero, a ratio is the quotient, x divided by y. A ratio can be written in three different ways. First, by using the word two, the second by using a colon, and the third one as a fraction. The order of ratio is very important such that quantities should be written in the order they are being listed. Moreover, the ratio may also be reduced to lowest term. For example, there are 10 girls and 6 boys in a class. What is the ratio of girls to boys? The ratio is 10 girls to 6 boys. 10 is to 6 or 10 over 6. In lowest term, we have 5 over 3. Let us now proceed with the meaning of proportion. A proportion is the equality of two ratios. It can be written as fraction or by the use of columns. This illustration of proportions can be read as A is to B as C is to D. Or we can also read that as A is to B is equal to C is to D. Each number in a proportion is called a term. We have the first, second, third, and fourth. The first and fourth term are called the extremes of a proportion. The second and third terms are called the means of a proportion. Therefore, A and B are the extremes, and B and C are the means. Determining the extremes and the means correctly is very important in solving problems involving proportion later on. If we are given the comparison 1 is to 4 is equal to 3 is to 12, how can we say that this is a proportion? You may check if these are equal by cross multiplication or getting the value of each ratio. 1 over 4 is equal to 3 over 12. We cross multiply them, therefore we can have 1 times 12 is equal to 12 and 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Since the answers are equal, then the given ratios are proportion. Let us proceed with the properties of proportion. Proportions are useful for interpreting and solving a variety of problems in geometry. Such proportions will usually have segment lengths for terms. The properties of proportion show how to rewrite a given proportion in equivalent form. Let's proceed with the first property of proportion. First, cross-multiplication property. The product of the extremes equals the product of the means. If A over B is equal to C over D, then AD is equal to BC, wherein B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. The second property is the alteration property. If A over B is equal to C over D, 
then A over C is equal to B over D. Wherein B is not equal to 0, C is not equal to 0, and D is not equal to 0. Since the product of A and D is equal to B, C, then the means or the extremes can be interchanged. The third property is the inverse property. If A over B is equal to C over D, then B over A is equal to D over C. Wherein A is not equal to 0, B is not equal to 0, C is not equal to 0, and D is not equal to 0. Thus, the reciprocals are equal. The fourth property is the addition property. If A over B is equal to C over B, is equivalent to the sum of the quantity A plus B over B is equal to the sum of the quantity of C plus D over D, wherein B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. And the fifth one is the subtraction property. If A over B is equal to C over D, then A minus B over B is equal to C minus D over D, wherein B is not equal to 0 and D is not equal to 0. We are now ready to solve problems involving proportion. In proportion, you must remember the correct placement of the means and extremes. Example number 1. What is the missing term of 5 over 6 is equal to 15 over x? The solution? We use the cross multiplication to find the missing term. 5 over 6 is equal to 15 over x. We multiply them. 5 times x is equal to 5x. 6 times 15 is equal to 9. Wherein, the given numerical coefficient of x is 5. Therefore, we divide both sides by 5. Then, we have 5x divided by 5, we have x. 90 divided by 5, we have 18. Therefore, x is equal to 18. Then, we have now 5 over 6 is equal to 15 over x. That is equal to 5 over 6 is equal to 15 over 18 when we substitute the given value of x. We may check if the answer is correct by substituting the value of x and then we cross multiply them. So we have now there 5 times 18 is equal to 90, 6 times 15 is equal to 90. Since the answers are the same, then we can say that the answer is correct. Example number 2. Find the missing term of a given expression 2.75 over 0 0.5 is equal to x over 1.5. Solution, we cross multiply them so we have now 0.5x is equal to 4.125. We divide both sides by 0.5 then we have now x is equal to 8.25. Let us now proceed with the third example. Find the second term in a proportion whose first, third, and fourth terms are 7, 3, and 12 respectively. Solution, since we have this in our discussion, first, second, and third, and fourth terms, let us identify the given terms. 7 is the first term, x is the second term, which is the unknown, and the third is a 3, and the fourth term is 12. For the solution, we have now 7 is to x is equal to 3 is to 12. We cross multiply the extremes and the means. x times 3 is equal to 3x. 7 times 12 is equal to 84. We divide both sides by 3 since the given numerical coefficient of x is 3. So we have now 3x over 3 is equal to x. Then 84 over 3 is equal to 28. Example number 4. Find the measures of the angles of a triangle that are in a ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3. Since 1 is to 2 is to 3 is a simplified ratio, let x, 2x, and 3x represent the angle measures. Solution, x plus 2x plus 3x is equal to 180. Since the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is 180, 6x is equal to 180, 
6x over 6 is equal to 180 over 6. Then, we have x now is equal to 30. Then, the angle measures 30. 2 times 30, 3 times 30, or we have 30, 60, and 90. To wrap up our discussion for today, ratio is the way to compare two or more quantities. The ratio of A to B can be written as a fraction by the word to or by using a column. A proportion is the equality of two ratios. It is an equation in which there are ratios on both sides and can be written in two ways, as to equal fraction or by the use of columns. In the proportion A is to B is equal to C is to D, the outer terms A and D are called the extremes, while the inner terms B and C are called the means. You are now ready to answer the post test. Direction, read each of the following carefully and identify what is being asked. Write only the letter of the correct answer in your paper. Number 1. To deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, the country's inner agency, Task Force, decided that out of 81 provinces, 67 will be under MGCQ and the rest will be under GCQ. What is the ratio of the province under GCQ to the total number of provinces? A, 67 is to 81. B, 81 is to 67. C, 14 is to 67. And D, 14 is to 81. Number 2. What is the value of M in the proportion M over B is equal to 7 over 3. A, 12. B, 21. C, 27. And D, 63. Number 3. In the proportion 5 is to Y is equal to Y is to 20, what is Y? A, 10 or negative 10. B, 25 or 4, C, 50 or 2, D, 100 or 1. Number 4. In the proportion, 4x minus 2 is to 9 is equal to 8 is to 12. What is x? x is equal to 1, B, x is equal to 2, C, x is equal to 3, and d, x is equal to 4. Number 5. What is y in the proportion the quantity of x plus 7 over 5 is equal to the quantity of 2x minus 3 over 3? a, x is equal to 7. b, x is equal to 36. c, x is equal to 36 over 7. And d, x is equal to 7 over 36. Correct answers are number 1, letter D, number 2, B, number 3, A, number 4 is B, and number 5, C. Did you get the correct answer? How can we apply now ratio and proportion in our daily lives? As a learner of Kawain City National High School, we are an advocate of the Project Watch with an acronym of we advocate time consciousness and honesty. Prior to the lesson we have learned today, we can apply ratio and proportion to improve our lives. While working at home, we can simply divide our time for us to focus on our studies and enjoy our lives as well, so as to have a good mental and emotional health. By applying the ratio of 70s to 30, our education is one of the most important part in our lives. Through this, we can learn many things and it really helps us to cope with this changing world. Therefore, it is really practical to spend 70% of our time in our studies by answering different activities in our modules and listening or watching via TV 
and radio based instruction. However, 30% of our time to play or to have recreational activities. Without this, we will become dull and lack of energy in our day-to-day -day undertaking. Hence, it is not economical to indulge ourselves in too much play because we will be able to forget the most important things. The 70 is to 30 rule will indeed remind us of which is paramount in our lives. In conclusion, having a balanced lifestyle will make us more happier and it will give us the fuel to do our tasks even in the face of challenges. Now my dear students, it's your turn to explore the different learning tasks given in your module. Your determination to learn and study in spite of hardship will absolutely be rewarded someday. You are the hope of our future, so your education must continue amidst the pandemic. May you continue to learn and gain insight. Don't lose hope. We can win this battle. Just continue to pray because God is always with us. Once again, good day my dear students. We hope that you have a meaningful learning experience through watching our videos.